It is time for a fall farm tour. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to here today. It is a beautiful, cool and a little breezy November morning, 2020. So the last time we were here, we were in the dog days of summer. The farm was bursting into life and here we are a few months later and the farm still is very lively but about to start to go to bed. So we figured before all the trees go to sleep, we'd give you guys a quick tour. So we're starting right up here at the front and we've done videos, by the way, I should say, we're doing this tour video. We get a lot of folks that watch this that don't necessarily watch our vlogs, but if you do, you guys will recognize most of what we're talking about today because we do cover those on our weekly vlogs. Here we are at the front of the property. We've actually got several trees planted here and this is our low quad and more tropical type area. So as Lori pans that way, you're gonna see we have four varieties of low quads here back against the rail fence there. We have a bay leaf in the corner. We have a pink guava. We have a strawberry guava and a pineapple guava against the wall. And then those four low quad varieties here right at the front of the farm. Now what you'll also see is you'll also see what we will be doing in and around the orchard rows is expanding the wood chips. You can see the wood chips are taking up large swaths of the property here. We like the way that looks and it also defines our rows. So it's very easy for me to come in, walk through, mow. We can even get the tractor back into here if we need to, to fill in wood chips and things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this way. As, you, as Lori pans, you'll see our primary chicken pasture. That is finally in place. In fact, we just started letting our laying hens out onto this pasture this past week and they love it. So got a lot of green coming in. We haven't done an update on the pasture. I definitely will be doing that here before we get our new broilers onto the pasture itself. So as Lori continues to pan, you'll see that we have our citrus area up front here. Now this is nowhere near the number of citrus trees we're gonna have. It's just what Reed had available for us so far. We have several more trees that are staked and flagged out here that we're just waiting to get. Let's go ahead and head around the corner and take a peek at the rest of the orchard. Here we are in our kumquat hedge that we have right up against our chicken run here. Now we've talked a little bit about this in the vlogs, but we have a small fence up here because we are having issues with rabbits coming in and gnawing on these trees. The trees have come back nice and strong, but they're doing well. We also planted a new Nagami kumquat that is doing very, very well right there on the corner. In fact, it's got a brand new fruit on it. But one thing I wanted to show you, you could probably see on camera, Lori can slide in a little bit. This is our Fukushu kumquat. And these produce fairly large kumquats. You can see this right here. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this. So you can see that is actually a pretty decent size. I'd say it's about the size of maybe a golf ball. So somewhere between a ping pong and a golf ball. Now these fruit you do eat whole. This one is argu arguably my favorite as far as flavor. So uh, let's see how this tastes. Mmm, mmm, that's good. Mmm, not to say the rest of that for Lori. You know what? Usually, mmm. Usually there's a really strong lemon flavor to these. And this particular one doesn't have it. It's actually more sweet than tart. Wow, that's really, really good. Okay, you can see this tree doing really well. It's flowering, which is very typical for kumquats. Got a lot of new growth that's pushed out here in the fall. The other trees are doing that as well, but we need to continue the tour. So let's go ahead and slide down here. Take a look at our ever-bearing mulberries. in our mulberry hedge. These are our Illinois Everbearing Mulberries. You can see that they're doing fantastic and they're doing exactly what we had planned. That's the western sky on that side. This is going to give us a tremendous amount of shade, especially by the end of next year. But when we planted these, these were just single sticks that were about this tall. If I can find the video, I'll link it for you, or at least you can take a peek at it in the corner. But this is just doing amazing. All three of them actually. In fact, all of them are taller than me. So I'm just under six feet. All these guys here are well above that. So beautiful trees. In fact, it even has a little bit of fruit on there. Not quite ripe. Uh, and of course I won't be able to find it. 
Uh, you're gonna have to take my word for it. It's in there. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so you can see these don't really have an ever bearing uh, fruit here in Arizona, but you can see it does still put on some fruit here in the fall. We are gonna go ahead and head around here. We're gonna take a peek at, so far, our favorite orchard. That would be our Western orchard behind me. This is basically where we have all of our stone fruit, and these were some of the first trees that we put in the ground. Now, that is only saying that they're about seven months old. So you can see they've gone from single sticks to beautiful, beautiful trees. We have our peach trees here. Now we did lose one. This last summer we had record breaking heat. In fact, it was a record breaking summer for heat here in Arizona. And we had a couple of these that failed on us. One of them was a random peach tree that died right here in the corner. Otherwise though, you can see they're doing really, really well. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of these, kind of give you guys a close up of what these look like. Wanted to stop at one of our Florida Prince peach trees. You can see this one is taller than I am, so, and nice and bushy, just a beautiful, beautiful peach tree. Remember, these were just single sticks that were about a foot and a half to two feet tall, and it's turned into this in seven months here in Arizona. So just a beautiful, beautiful tree. You can see we removed the cages so that these had a chance to really spread out and get a lot of outward growth, which we really like to see. And then, of course, this winter we'll have to come back and prune it up. All the peach trees look great. We're gonna go ahead and slide over here. There's actually one of our one of our favorite trees, at least to how it's growing, and you'll see why here in just a second. This is our nectarine plum hybrid, definitely turning into one of our favorite trees. I think one of the reasons why is just how beautiful the new growth is. So it's different from all the rest of our trees. Instead of the new growth being a bright green, it actually is this purple color, just this beautiful plum purple color. And then as they get a little bit older, they, too, they do turn green. Now this tree was actually one of our trees that was eaten almost to the ground by jackrabbits. It was cut back to about a foot tall. All of the branching was eaten. It really struggled for about a month and a half. We thought we were gonna lose it. And then all of a sudden this summer, it just took off. So much so that we finally actually took the cage off last week. But you can see this tree over six feet tall. It's got uh, more of an upright growth habit because of how we had it caged in, but now that we've had it open, I think it's gonna just be a beautiful, beautiful tree. And of course, we're really looking forward to the fruit. So now what we need to do is slide over and look at a couple of tree replacements that we had to do. Here we are, we're actually in a few of our hybrid varieties, and you can see there's these three trees we actually had to replace because we lost them. And then there's a little tree back there, kind of in the middle, we'll show you here in a sec. But these trees here are actually all here for cross-pollination. So they're plum apricot hybrids. They all cross-pollinate each other. In fact, this one is actually a peach apricot plum hybrid. So it's a triple hybrid. So in this one right behind it is actually the pollinator for this particular variety. But you can see these look really great. There's one variety I wanna show you that Reed at RSI Growers just insisted that we grow. This variety here is actually one that Reed has that he is the one that actually made it from what I understand. He calls it a Satlap and it is a Satsuma Plum Lappins Cherry Hybrid. So it got a little bit stressed out when we got it here. The way we had to transport it here in the truck, it got a little blasted with the wind. But overall you can see it's starting to actually go to sleep for the fall. Not a problem as long as it comes back strong. We're really excited about this variety come spring. So we got a couple more trees back here, but there's two in the back in particular that I want to take back and show you guys. So I wanna stop at one more tree that we talked about before. This is our burgundy plum. This tree is really impressive. You can see we've still got it caged because it was having some issues with rabbits still. So we definitely need to get this uncaged. 
and we will we'll do that when we ca come back for pruning but you can see where it goes above the cage it's just starting to burst out which is great to see just a beautiful tree lots of beautiful branching starting to go to sleep here for the fall but still a very good looking tree yeah actually look over here you're going to see a tree that we don't haven't had on the farm yet this is actually a santa rosa plum it's a brand new baby santa rosa we planted it a few weeks ago so it's got a ways to go but really excited about this particular variety because it's going to help cross pollinate everything that's basically here and then behind lori another 30 or 40 feet so very important variety for us here on the farm now one last thing i want to do on this side is stop over here but before i do that i want to point out that tree there that is actually a plum apricot hybrid and it is our strongest performer it's actually the tallest tree over here on this side of the farm but just a beautiful set specimen it's probably about eight feet tall and just a beautiful beautiful tree but that's not what i want to show you guys i want to show you guys what's over here on the corner Last stop here on the Western Orchard would be these two trees. These are both almond varieties. They're all in one almonds. And they struggled a little bit again with a lot of pressure from rabbits. We got the larger cages on them about two months ago and they have just sprung out into life. They look really good, probably about six feet tall on this one and probably about four and a half to five feet tall on that second one. They're on two different rootstocks that we're testing out, so we'll see how they do but the trees themselves look fantastic. So these definitely need a lot of help and protection from rabbits because the rabbits were just going to town on these two. Next stop is gonna be right over there. We're gonna head right to the middle of the farm here and take a peek at our vineyard garden. We're actually on the southwest corner of our vineyard garden and you can see we've got our Cabernet grapes in here brand new been in for about a month right across the back here facing the back of the property and we have a few different grapes in so we did get our manuka grapes in they're down here on this side and we also got our thompson grapes that are on the front on the other side still have a lot more grapes to come in fact all those are on order or we'll be picking them up here in the next couple of months so by the i would say probably february or march hopefully we'll have all of them planted and in the ground now, of course, a vineyard garden needs something inside of it, and that would be a garden. So let's go ahead and take a peek at that. Are the first beds that we planted here on the farm. These are predominantly radishes that you'll see here in these beds. You can see this bed has actually really sprung to life here over the last few weeks as these radishes finally started to take off lots of green we had an issue with the last bed and that one actually we planted some cauliflower into it because we didn't have a lot of growth in it one other thing too as far as an update you'll see back behind me for the most part these little guys are holding up pretty well we had talked about that when we put these in and installed all of the framing for the bird protection that we weren't sure if these were going to be heavy enough well, yesterday we had some torrential winds come through and it's blown a few of them down. However, because of how we have them attached, birds still can't get in. So they're holding up really well. Now, one other thing while we're here at Gardens, I'm gonna have Lori turn around this way. Let's look at these first three beds where we actually planted out all of our winter vegetables. So here's one of our garden beds. We have all three of these beds basically planted out the same with the same things in them. You'll see the very front of this bed is bright green and those are actually daikon radishes. On either side of it, we have some garlic planted and then we have several different types of greens that have all sprouted here from seed in the last couple of weeks. Right down the center, we have beets. We have a specific type of kale. We have a couple different types of lettuce and then we have some spinach on the back side. And then those run all the way down. Right in the middle, we have some cauliflower. And then at the very back, we've got some more garlic and we have some more radish. So we've got plenty of radish coming in. So one other thing that we, that we planted throughout each one of these beds, just kind of sporadically, is carrots. And I just started seeing some carrots coming up here as well. So we have carrots kind of spread throughout all three of these beds. 
Really looking forward to the production out of these. One of the major things that we have happen here in the fall is we do have livestock coming onto the farm. And actually all of our livestock for the fall is here on the farm. So let's go take a look at those. First up for new livestock would be our broiler chickens. So you can see they're down in here if Lori gets a shot. You'll see we've actually had to put some towels on the brooder. They were a little cool last night. And you can see they're actually feeding right now. So they're doing really good. They're really comfy. So that's the key, especially this first week. We spend a lot of time with them and making sure that they're nice and warm, but not too hot because they're pretty fragile here. In fact, one of the things that uh, we had one of our viewers, in fact, Chet, I want to thank you for the nickname. We call these guys Nuggets now. <laughs> I think it's a perfect little nickname. So the Nuggets are doing good. One other thing I want to look at as far as livestock is right over there. So one of our favorite things to raise here on the farm would be what you see next to me here, and these are our piggies. So we've got seven pigs here, and we've got three Chester Whites, we've got a couple of Burks and a couple of Hampshires. You can see they're all really interested in us and what we're doing, and they're just adorable. So love having these guys on the farm. They're fantastic as far as taking any waste that the chickens can't take care of. These pigs definitely do. And we just, we just love having them around. They're a lot of fun. You can see they are really hoping that I have some snacks for them, <laughs> which I don't yet. Uh, but they're doing really, really well. Had a couple hiccups here the first week, but I think we've got all that figured out. The only thing that we have with pigs here is the dust. A lot of dust. You know, they do have a tendency to cough, so we need to make sure we're taking care of it, knocking that dust back down to make sure we don't have them coughing too much. Always makes Lori and I nervous. We always think it's pneumonia and it never is. Um, but you can see they're doing really, really good. All right, so we're gonna leave the piggies be and head back over here to the Eastern Orchard. Let's see what's going on there. We're back here at the back end of our fig orchard. You can see we have a few new varieties of figs right here on the back. This we're calling the RSI White. We got it from Reed at RSI Growers. We have a Violet de Bardot that's brand new in the ground back there, and Olympia, or Olympian, fig right there on that side. Brand new plantings in the ground, which is why you see them caged. Now, as we look back at the rest of the figs, you'll see we removed the cages. For the most part, they're doing okay. We are still seeing some rabbit damage, but these trees are big enough. They've really exploded with growth here over the summertime, and we're not concerned with them at this point. They're doing great. Now, one of the things that we did see on our panache fig is I think we may have some ripe figs, so let's go take a look. Here we are at our panache fig. You can see very vertical growth habit. We've talked about that, but I've got a couple of figs. If Lori slides in, you'll know these are ripe because they go from this beautiful variegated color to more of a yellowish color, usually. <laughs> this one's still got some green, and we find that here with these fall figs. But I'm gonna pick this one because that's definitely overripe. And then there's another one down here you can see is actually just about perfect. You can see it starts to droop. I'm gonna go ahead and pick that one as well. Yeah, that one looks really good. Oh, beautiful figs. Let's go ahead and open this one. I think this one's gonna look really good. Let's look here. Yeah, look at that. That's just a beautiful fig. I'm gonna open up this one too. I think this is a little overripe, but oh, yeah. So it's got, it looks like it's got a little bit of yeah, that's a little bit of mold right there in the middle. That's a bummer because it looks really good otherwise. I'm gonna feed this one to the pigs, but I'm gonna feed this one to me. Well, and Lori. Let's see how this tastes. Oh. <laughs> mm. oh. You're gonna have to give me a minute. Man. Oh, I'll tell you what, this is my favorite fig so far. I love these figs. So it has a little bit of a fruity flavor to it. 
almost like a strawberry. I guess strawberry would be the best way for me to describe it. I mean, it tastes like a fig, but it's got kind of the strawberry flavor. Oh man, so good. I have to save the other half for Lori. I want to eat it, but I'm going to save it for Lori. <laughs> All right, this goes to the pigs. So what we're going to do, we're going to take you guys up here into the pear part of this orchard and then right up into the apples. So let's go ahead and walk this way. These pear trees grow completely different from the other trees here on the farm. Nice and tall, so this one's over six feet tall. In fact, several of them are, but very, very vertical. So we've learned from past experience that this is really how these trees like to grow. So when we come back to prune and shape these trees, you won't see that open center like we've done in the past. We're definitely gonna be keeping these more vertical, and we'll talk about that another time. But this here is a Waddell pear, so we get these from Reed at RSI Growers. But you can see it's just done fantastic, even through the summertime. Here in the fall, it actually does put on some new growth, but it will go dormant pretty quick. As Lori looks that way, you'll see the rest of our trees, all of our pear trees, definitely starting to fall into that fall dormancy and go to sleep for the winter. Big change here on the palm fruit side of the farm, on the eastern side, is our apple trees. Let's go take a look at our apple trees. We have a gap here where we still have a lot of apple trees to put into the ground. That's all what you have back here. We've got apple trees on order. We also have some uh, jujubes on order. That's what'll be back here behind these. So what we have up front is six different trees. These are actually all Dorset and Anna apple trees. Fantastic trees here in Arizona. You can't go wrong with either one of them. They cross pollinate each other so that you get some extra production. Fantastic, heavy producers. So we've got these in the ground first. These are what Reed had available for us and newly planted. These have only been in the ground here for a few weeks. All about to go to sleep, but stand nice and strong. We've had some warm weather, not today, <laughs> but that warm weather really allowed them to get some root establishment. They've stayed nice and green and pushed a little bit of new growth out of the tips. So these look good, but what we need to do is head over to the berry area because we need to take a look at what's going on there. Last stop on the tour today would be our berry area here. So we have most of our berries planted at this point. You guys know our favorite Shangri-La mulberry is right here. These guys are all starting to fall asleep for the fall doing really, really well. The contorted mulberries, we'll look at those here in just a second, but berries, we've got berries in these beds. As we move down, we've got brand new plantings. This here is a Columbia thornless blackberry right here in this bed. Made this bed for it a few weeks ago and got that into the ground. Next one over would be our triple crown blackberry that we actually used, took as a pup from the old property. It's doing well. And then in that last bed, I wanna show you that one up close. Here is a bed that we've been featuring a few different times in a lot of our vlogs. We had a sweet potato that was growing up in the ground here and just did amazing. But we finally got some blackberries planted. So this blackberry here we haven't tried before. It's called a Loch Ness blackberry. This came in as just a stick from Rain Tree Nursery, but you can see it's actually coming on pretty strong here in the fall. Got some nice green growth on it. Looks really good. And then our favorite producer, the Primark Blackberry, that's right here. And that is the Primark Freedom Blackberry. So it's a thornless blackberry. Really looking forward to that one as well. It's got some strong growth. And then you'll also see one other thing that we just kind of planted here as a ground cover. And it's still actually growing for now, but not too much longer. And that's an acorn squash. But one of the things we noticed when we pulled this back, and if Lori wants to slide in here just a little bit, is the amazing soil production that we did see. This was just water and wood chips all summer long, and you can see that it's turning into some incredible, just amazing soil. So in fact, look at that. That is a sweet potato root. <laughs> I'm gonna feed this to the piggies. But uh, so that really helped the sweet potato uh, here this uh, summer grow, and then just some incredible soil that's being created. 
by nothing but wood chips and water. Oh, it smells so good. Just an amazing smell to that soil. So these doing great. Really looking forward to the berry production out of these beds. Last thing that we need to look at here in the berries, besides my dirty hands, would be our contorted mulberries. Last stop would be our contorted mulberries. These trees have not failed to impress. So we finally got these out of the cages, so they're a little extra contorted here at the bottom. But you can see the growth. I mean, these trees, I mean, this is seven, pushing between seven and eight feet tall here. This one here is even taller. <laughs> you can see just how spread out it's grown. But they've just done fantastic. And these two trees, along with all the mulberries, we actually did some air layering on the trees we had on the old property. Put these in the ground here. I think it was March. These were some of the first trees in the ground. And again, just sticks about this high and they've turned into these trees. So looks fantastic. So that's gonna wrap it up for our fall farm tour here at Edge of Nowhere Farm. So you can see behind me here, kind of looking across the farm, we've got a lot of green that's finally coming in onto the farm. We've got our livestock here with us. We're really excited to have more life on the farm. Over a hundred souls here on the farm going into the fall of 2020. You know what's really cool? We actually have only been on this property for a year. In fact, it was October of 2019 that we moved here. It's here in November of 2020. So a year later, we have all of this in place and man, we have got a lot to go. We have a lot of trees on order that we're going to be planting this winter in through the spring. A lot of bare root trees. We're going to be sharing all that stuff with you guys. We've got pruning to do and we've got winter time. So there's a whole lot of work to do there. And of course, we've got all that livestock here on the farm. Really looking forward to what we've got going on now and also looking forward. We've got a lot going in in the spring of next year. So a lot of stuff that we're still going to be sharing with you guys. We are definitely not done yet. So just wanna thank you guys for joining us today. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them those in the comment section down below. Gonna encourage you guys, if you guys watch a lot of the update episodes, check out our weekly vlogs. We really carry you guys through and show you a lot of the details and behind the scenes stuff that we share with you guys in these episodes. We'd love to see you there. And of course our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description, a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. So now, of course, these have just started. Oh, actually, you know what? Huh. Dicey carrots. We got carrots. All right. So one of our favorite things to raise here on the farm. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel like I need some pants. There you go. <laughs> Two. Almost dead. Yep. All right. We good? Yeah. Okay. You just got a little distracted. I did. <laughs> I always get distracted by all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but I figured dirt on the hands might as well. Take a break. That's gonna wrap it up for our far, far <laughs> of cold. Well, let's go get warmed up. It's cold. It's cold.